Good evening and welcome to episode 400 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamandongwa Kumalo. It's the Wednesday edition of the Private Property Podcast. And if you're joining us for the first time, welcome to the family. You tune in to the only daily property show in South Africa, catering to your property needs. And to all our regular viewers, welcome to it. You know how we do. Every single weekday, you and I have an appointment at 7 p.m., I'm always in conversation with a property expert who helps us with our property journey. And it doesn't matter where you are in your journey, whether you're looking to build, to buy, to sell, or of course, looking to, you know, rent or you are a tenant yourself. This is a show that makes sure that you have the best information, tools and insights to make better property decisions. Now, it is a milestone episode, 400 episodes into the show. Uh, you know, I was actually having a conversation with somebody earlier saying, I don't know of a local Local, uh, local podcast that has reached uh, 400 episodes. I could be mistaken. There certainly isn't a property podcast on the continent that has 400 episodes. So we certainly are quite excited for reaching that huge milestone. And of course, couldn't have done it without you at home. So thank you very much for walking this journey, always engaging us on our social media platforms. And of course, sharing the love, making the property circle bigger and bigger. And talking about the social media platforms and the love that you keep sharing, you are, of course, aware of the incredible competition that we're running on our social media page on particularly on the Facebook page, where we're giving away 500 rands in cash every single evening. And all you have to do to stand a chance of walking away with that cash prize is to tune into the show 
every single weekday. Make sure that you've commented on the pinned post uh, on our Facebook page where we want to find out from you some of the great property insight advice that you've picked up while watching the show. And of course, any that you've also used. And if we call your name, you need to uh, drop us a message in order to claim your prize. In the event that we don't have somebody who claims their prize while the show is live, we have a rollover to the following day. And that's precisely what happened yesterday. So we've got a thousand rands in the money bag this evening. Um, and I think I might actually add an additional prize. It's, it's 400 episodes in. I hope that the team doesn't kill me on this one. Um, I think I might just add a prize. Um, and the prize might be the property guide, a copy of the property guide, which is a book, of course, that private property has purchased. And all you need to do to send a chance of walking away with that copy is, of course, you know, send a comment or question this evening during this show, and we'll choose the lucky winner uh, at the end of the show. It's that easy. I know the team didn't know about this. So I hope that they do not kill me. Uh, I'll pick the lucky winner at the end of the show. So engage with us as much as possible on the Facebook page right now as you're watching the show. Send those comments uh, as we are in conversation this evening on episode 400. Now, one of the other great things, of course, is that I'm never, ever, ever alone. Uh, it is a Wednesday, so later this evening, you can catch Esty Clarsen on the First Time Home Buyers Show, where she's always in conversation with people who've not only walked to that first time home buying journey, but have gone on to grow their property portfolios from strength to strength. And for Tuesdays and Thursdays, you can catch on by Lynn Walker on the Farming Podcast, where she tackles all things agriculture. And every Mondays and Fridays, Chad brings you the Home Shoppers Show, where he takes you through incredible properties that you can find on www.privateproperty.co.za. Well, those are the great shows that you can look forward to every single weekday at 8 p.m. right here across Private Property's social media pages. And as usual, uh, we will be announcing the lucky winner uh, halfway through the show. But because it's episode 400, we'll also going to give away uh, the property guide i know that the team doesn't know about this one so all you have to do with that is of course ask a question this evening or send your comments um and i think one of the the things that i want to probably find out from you as you send your comments is when was the first time you watched the show? Um, you know, if you remember what the episode was about and perhaps some of the key things that you picked up from that. We'll see uh, which comments come out, which are great, and uh, I'll choose a winner at the end of the show. Well, to kickstart our conversation this evening, I'm very excited with it. It's a Wednesday, and so, of course, do you have uh, somebody from the APSA Home Loans team? This evening, we're going to be looking at the impact, uh, the importance and the impact of property investment. We talk about this, you know, so often, but of course we, we want to look at why it's important, but also the fundamental impact that investing in property has, not just for the investor, but also for the people who ultimately, ultimately end up living there. And I'm joined by Miguel Martins, who's a portfolio head for investors at AFSA Home Loans, as well as Andrew Walker, who's the CEO at the South African Property Investors Network. Gentlemen, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Good evening, and thank you, Zabra. Evening, Zama, Miguel, good to be here. It's always so great to, to have you, Miguel, on the show and yourself, Andrew. Uh, and Miguel, I want to start with you uh, with this particular topic this evening. We talk about property investment a lot. And I think if, if I look at the, the COVID era period, uh, you know, investing in property has kind of become a, a very, you know, fashionable in vogue thing uh, to the point where we sometimes perhaps don't quite understand when we talk about a property investor, who exactly we're talking about, you know, and, and I want us to start it there because there's still, there's still that age old debate about, you know, are you investing in property if you only buy, if you've only, for instance, bought your primary residence and that's it, or that's just, that's where you live and it's not necessarily an investment. Uh, you haven't actually gone and put in any tenants in a cottage, for instance. So when we talk about you know, a property investor, what exactly, who exactly are we referring to? Yeah. And, that's, and, that's, and, and that's a great discussion point, Zama. So mm -hmm. if you go to old Mr. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, right? You'll say a property uh, is, is an asset when you derive income from it, right? So property which you live in is not necessarily an asset, doesn't derive income. But a property that you rent out, that you renovate and sell, that you create create value, uh, that's that's an asset. So I guess my definition of a property investor is is someone who takes a piece of property, whether it's an empty stand, and they put in, and, and and they and they build a home in it, whether they take an existing home, renovate it, and then sell it on, or whether they take an existing property, uh, purchase it at a at a at a good price, and then rent it on to to a tenant. But as, as long as you're creating value and you're creating income from that transaction, 
transaction from that deal, uh, you are dealing with an asset. And I think in my books, you're a property investor. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I want us to, Andrew, speak a bit about property investors and perhaps their temperament. Uh, I mean, you do hit up the SA Property Investors Network. So work with and deal with, and certainly come across a lot of property investors Perhaps share with us some you know, common traits that you've certainly picked up over the years and perhaps even some of the, uh, the trends that you've picked up when it comes to property investors that, have, that you've worked with through SAPEN. Yeah, absolutely, Zaman. I mean, you know, looking back at the last two years with so much uncertainty in the property market in South Africa, you know, what's going to happen to the property industry and with interest rates dropping, it's actually excited a lot of property investors. And when you engage the investors and you ask them about the property market, are you positive, are you negative? Most of them are positive. Most of them are like, you know what, Andrew, there's never a good time to buy. And interest rates now are the lowest they've been in a very, very long time. And what we see now with property investors, when they get the education, they start realizing there's different strategies. There's installment sale agreements. And that's one specific strategy, Zama, we see a lot of investors talking about because there are, unfortunately, a lot of individuals out there that are being squeezed, that are being pushed, that can't afford to keep up with their bond payments. Um, and so one of the trends, if you said to me, Andrew, what's the number one trend you're starting to see in the property market from a property investment point of view, as in what are investors talking about? I'd say number one is now becoming what we call installment sale agreements where they're helping homeowners. And the second trend, um, but to be fair, it's been a trend for a very long time, uh, is your student accommodation market. Um, it's been a trend for a while. There's still a lot of positivity around that market. A lot of our investors within the SAPRIN community, even some of the beginners, but mostly the advanced investors are still going down the road of renting out to, to, to students. But overall, Zama, we're seeing a lot of positivity. Uh, we're seeing more in um, our, our membership growth grew by 26% in COVID. You know, people, you know, turning to property because regardless of the market and the economy, the reason I love property, Zama, is everyone needs a place to live. Everyone will need a place to buy or a place to rent. You just need to understand what does property investment really mean, um, and, you know, in terms of getting into the arena, because it's not as easy as a lot of people think it is. Mm. And, and, you know, Andrew, I, I like that you point out that it's not as easy as some people make it out to be. Uh, I, I, I always see red every time uh, your know, property in investors uh, or people who call themselves property investors say it's easy, I was able to do it. The barrier of entry is real. And I think we must not lie about the difficulty of entering the property market, uh, regardless of whether you're going to you know, do it yourself uh, or use other people's money. There's quite a significant bit of work that you're going to have to do regardless. So making it seem as though it's a walk in the park is such a misrepresentation, uh, especially also when you consider how much work is going to be ahead of you as you've now taken on that property investment, have to manage it, whether you're self-managing or, of course, even working with an agent. It, it's a full-time job in many ways, right? I think it, it, it depends how you go about working and managing it but you certainly are going to have to do work. There's nothing passive about uh, no. property. <laughs> and Definitely think, not. Definitely. Yeah, and I think the, the sooner we, we, we not only recognize that, but certainly come to terms with that, um, the easier for so many people. And talking about that, I'm seeing such a lot, I'm seeing quite a bit of love that we're getting on our Facebook page as many of you are tuned into the 400th episode of the Private Property Podcast with myself as I'm doing Kumalo. It's a big episode episode number. Uh, we are going to do something special though uh, towards the end, the last show that we're going to have and I'm not going to spoil it and share anything. The team is working tirelessly behind the scenes to make sure that we pull off something uh, that I know many of you at home are also going to absolutely enjoy. So do look out for that on our social media pages. I see Farana Siddiqui, Abida Albertain, Happiness Martina Maluleka saying hello to our Queen Zama. Uh, good evening to you there, um, Happiness. And uh, Farana Siddiqui also commenting 
Remember earlier I said I'm going to do a spot prize giveaway. Uh, so in addition to the giveaway that we always have, we're going to do a spot prize giveaway for episode 400. We are giving away a copy of the uh, property guide. And that is, of course, one that is published by uh, private property. And all you have to do to stand a chance to walk away with that is comment right now on this live uh, before the show ends. Share with us, you know, which episode was the first time, the first episode that you tuned into. Uh, if you even remember the topic, that would be fantastic. And you know what? What did you learn from that episode? I think based on the comments we'll uh, get, I'll choose one of the winners that the team, one of the names that the team sends, uh, and you'll be able to walk away with that book. Uh, Farana Siddiqui saying, I'm here from episode 10. So right from the start, I learned a lot and still learning every day. Thank you, Private Property. I still remember last year's big prize when two winners won 50,000 each. Uh, this show grows from strength to strength. Uh, Paulina Ngos is saying, Private Property, fine. Uh, first this episode was when um, private property was running a competition where we had to look for keys in searching properties, reading specific uh, keywords. And that was, of course, the Sherlock Holmes competition that we ran last year. It also won us a great uh, award. We got recognition in the industry for that competition, which was quite fantastic. Uh, Serifi Mwashen saying, lost count. That's how long I have been following. But I remember my first was on YouTube. And now they're all the way on Facebook. Christina Dichar was saying, I love property and one day I'll tell my story, I'll come with the testimony. And I absolutely love that, Christine. I think some of the great testimonies we received, um, one of the last shows that we actually did late last year, somebody messaged us saying that they actually had bought five properties that year uh, and they were able to do so in that year from watching the episodes and they were so grateful for the different episodes, the different insights, uh, tools, advice that we were able to give on the show. So absolutely love hearing your testimonies of how the show has also impacted you and of course your property journey. I want us though to take a quick break, see who the lucky winner of the daily competition that we're running. We've got a thousand rands in the money bag uh, and of course you have to be watching us you have to drop a message if your name is called out in order to claim the prize and uh, when we come back we'll certainly go through more of your messages and of course continue the conversation of the importance and the impact of property investment with Miguel Martins and Andrew Walker. Let's have a quick look at who this evening's winner is. And the lucky winner this evening is Spa Me. Uh, Spa Me, you are the lucky winner of the thousand rands that is in the money bag. I hope that they're watching. And if you are, do make sure that you drop us a message down here below in order to claim your prize. So thousand rands that's in the money bag. And of course, we'll see later on in the show if they have indeed been watching. Now to continue our conversation uh, from uh, Miguel with rather Miguel Martins from APSA Home Loans. You know, Miguel, I I'm certainly keen to hear from you uh, when we reflect on the year that was perhaps some of the trends that you've also picked up from investors. And you work with investors quite a lot, uh, some wanting to, of course, you know, get, get some access to capital from, you know, the bank, get home loans, whether you're buying a house or certainly buying a few apartments. What have been some of the trends that you've picked up and even the, the nature of the transactions that, you know, property investors are typically looking to finance? So Zama, what, what a year it's been, right? Um, we started off the year in what was, I think, our, our second or third wave. You know, over, over December, beaches were locked down. You couldn't buy alcohol. That's how we started off the year, right? And just when we thought the year was, was going to was gonna normalize, bang, we had, we, we had riots. And, and, and this was just one... One heck of a year, right? And, 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 and in between all that, there was a lot, of, a, a lot more going on. Um, one word that I can describe uh, investors uh, with is, is resilient. An, uh, an investor looks for the deal, looks for the deal that has the right numbers, no matter what's happening uh, in the environment, takes the environment into consideration, but works with it. And, uh, and as I spoke to various investors, um, you know, either in the beginning of the year and, and, and also in the second half of the year, 
Uh, one thing that was always that was all that, that was common between both conversations and in two very different, almost um, economic environments in a way, uh, at least market environments, was just looking forward, doing the deal, finding value, growing their portfolios, and just and and, and just keeping on, keeping on. And and really, one one thing I find about about, about my job and 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 and, and this, in these discussions with uh, with investors is, is is the inspiration that comes. From, from just that human factor of they have a dream, they have a passion, and they go out there and they make it happen. Um, mm. and, and, that's, and that's really what, what, I, what I can attest to. In terms of the types of deals, you know, I, I think the, all, all the strategies are out there, whether it's buy to let, uh, flipping, so buy, renovate, um, and sell. Uh, there, there are a lot of uh, non-finance deals that, um, that Andrew's spoken about. Um, what, one of the investors that uh, actually won a category at the Investor of the Year Awards was someone who was doing the, the rent-to-rent Airbnb strategy. So not even purchasing the property, but still, as an investor, leveraging property, creating value. So if, 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 if there's anything to leave is, is, uh, with, with, with the audience tonight is that there are many strategies. It's about getting the education, understanding how to go about doing these strategies, and then going out there and doing it and taking action, taking that step forward. Mm-hmm. And, you, you know, Miguel, when we when we look at that, I think one of the things that's clear is that uh, property investors certainly are resilient. They've been able to find different kinds of deals, even in places where uh, some people wouldn't even look. They've been able to structure deals in different, you know, in different ways, whether you're using an installment sale agreement, rent to rent, you know, rent to, uh, I mean, buy to rent and, and even buy to flip. And, and I think some even use a combination of different strategies in their property portfolio as opposed to having one primary one. I, I'd be keen to hear from you on, on the fundamental um, you know, impact that property investors also have overall on the economy. Because I think it, it's one thing, uh, I think in many ways, landlords have kind of gotten a bad reputation um, and with, with good reason, because I think they, they certainly are quite a lot of you know, not so great landlords out there and who are really in it, uh, we'll say purely for themselves and also don't necessarily give the best service. Because I think it's, it's probably okay to be in it for yourself, but you need to give quality service. Uh, but we have, of course, seen many landlords who don't do that and even used, you know, unlawful means to manage their tenants, unfortunately. But when we look at the impact that uh, property investment, you know, fundamentally has on the economy, perhaps reflect uh, for us a little bit on, you know, on that impact. Because sometimes, and a lot of the people who watch the show, some of the property investors, they may not be able to actually see the, the threat and the ways that they actually do contribute to the bigger picture of things in, in the country. Uh, so, uh, it's so understated, right? Uh, mm-hmm. we, 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 you're right. We look at property investors and landlords and, and there can be these negative perceptions. But at the end of the day, as a property investor, no matter which strategy you, you use, you, you're producing a product, you're providing a service, and that service might be a temporary or long-term accommodation. That product might be a, a, um, a house that's been improved and now being sold back into the market. And at the end of the day, to be, to, to be sustainable in this market and in any market, you need to keep producing your product and service um, at, 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 at a high value at the right price point that, it, that, that addresses the needs of the market. And that's what takes you through the cycles, through the challenges. And, and if you're doing that as a property investor, again, if, 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 if you're renting out rooms, if you're renting out uh, apartments, it's, it's what is, that is your product. How are you enhancing your product with free Wi-Fi, um, man, managing uh, any issues that need to be dealt with uh, on the property, selling, selling a house that's, that, that, that's been renovated, ensure it's been renovated to, to, to the right spec so that those buyers don't come back to you and, 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 and uh, possibly in, impact your name negatively if you haven't given them a good product. So really keeping that in mind and not just looking for the quick buck is what will take investors through the cycle and through turbulent times. To I, you, think, I, think, I think we may have lost uh, Zama there. I think she's uh, struggling with connectivity.
And I do apologize for that. Uh, I think one of the things that we've certainly seen in the 400 episodes that we've been on is that every so often uh, the tech gremlins get the better of us. I was actually saying to my guest before I come on air, I'm currently on a load reduction schedule. So I know that it's probably uh, the network kicking me out because every single time, whenever we're going to have load shedding, uh, that certainly does happen. But you still, of course, tune in to episode 400 of the Private Property Podcast with myself, who's on Kumalo, in conversation with Miguel Martins and Andrew Walker looking at the importance and the impact of property investment this evening. And I want to bring you in, uh, you know, back in, Andrew, you know, recently hosted the, uh, the Investor of the Year Awards, of course, Sapin hosted that. Perhaps tell us a little bit about it. Uh, I certainly want to have a, you know, a quick chat about some of the great, uh, you know, uh, deals that a lot of the investors brought up. And of course, later on, Miguel will also share with us just as one of the judges, you know, APSA's role. And certainly, of course, the impact that, you know, an awards like that has when it comes to property investment as a whole. Yes, absolutely, Zama. And, you know, we, we run over 180 events a year. And this Investor of the Year platform is by far our best event. And, you know, Zama, it's a third year running we're doing it, right? The first time was 2018. I remember May. Um, I put this event with the Bryanson Country Club and I thought, You know, there's no platform in South Africa right now that recognizes social property entrepreneurs. And if you think about it, investors go out and they take a risk. Investors have challenges. Investors get let down. Investors do struggle. And I thought to myself, as as a property investor myself, I really wanted to put a platform together that recognizes all property investors in South Africa. And, And our last investor of the year where you were a great host, was the 18th of November at Melrose Arch. And uh, unfortunately, I couldn't be there, so I felt sick on the day. Can you believe it? But the show goes on. You and Kelly did a great job. And the, and the awesome thing about this platform is that there's different categories. There's the beginner category. So it doesn't matter if you're a first-time investor buying your very first investment property. There's, there's a place and there's room for you. Or perhaps you're an investor jumping out of residential, doing developments and, 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 and the big leagues. Or it could be that, like Miguel said, you're an innovative investor. You, you, you're running the air, the, the, the rent-to-rent strategy and applying an Airbnb strategy on top of that. So we saw there was such a diverse amount of property deals from buy to lets to Airbnb to rent-to-rent to development to um, a student accommodation we almost had every type of property strategy you can have in the room from people who started out in 2020 to people who have been investing for 10 or 15 years. And what we get out of this evening is hope. Regardless of COVID, regardless of what's been happening around the world in South Africa, as South Africans, we're resilient as property investors and nothing is going to stop us. All we have to do is take into, into consideration the market, maybe be a bit more conservative when you run our numbers, but invest of the year, bring an EPSA bank on board, private property on board, TAF, Tal Africa, all the partners, all the giants in the property industry back into this great competition. Um, and Zama, you were there, Miguel, you were there. Um, I was there virtually. It was a fantastic event and it just brought – it brought, you know, for, for, for 2021, it just brought that excitement and that hope um, that everyone can become a property investor if they just know how and where to start. Mm-hmm. And we're going to want to bring you in. I mean, you are one of the judges, APSA being one of the partners uh, for the awards. Perhaps tell us, you know, why, why this particular awards? Uh, you know, what, what is it about this particular event and certainly partnering with Sapin because I know that, you know, beyond the awards, there's also other work that, you know, APSA does with uh, Sapin. Perhaps tell us why Sapin and the value that APSA certainly does see in a partnership of this nature. Well, thanks, Zama. So we've been with, we've been a partner of Sapin's uh, since 2019. So it's again a solid three years. And we really appreciate um, the platform that, that, that Sapin allows us to, to speak to investors, to share our ideas with them, to get their ideas uh, to us and, and, and really let us know what they need. So that's really the benefit of, of, of working with Sapin is that um, we, we're able to get onto a platform with investors and exchange ideas. As, as to the uh, Investor of the Year Awards, well, APSA Home Loans has the aspiration of housing the nation 
and shaping the industry in a meaningful way. And we're always looking for opportunities in the, in the, in, 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 in the various parts of the ecosystem that is uh, mortgage lending and, 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 and property in South Africa to, to do that. So the, the Investor of the Year Awards, um, in, 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 a, in an amazing way, it shines a light on those individuals who are willing to be brave, bold, and tenacious in the face of an ever-changing property and economic environment. As I was saying early on, this year has been one hell of a year. And to see these investors come up and present um, their, their strategies and their, and, their, and their successes this year was amazing. I think, uh, Andrew, there were 80 uh, applicants altogether, of which 12 made it to, to the finals. And, and, and really to see some investors come who are unemployed, able to put the deal together, of course, having the skills and knowledge that they get through being part of uh, the SAPINS network, but put that deal together and ultimately have ownership of a 2 million rand property is amazing. And I think, as Andrew said, this provides um, our youngsters hope. This provides investors out there who think that they can't get financing, that they can't get, break into this market, that actually they can. And if they, if they look at the stories of these finalists and, and if they're inspired by the grit and, and passion that this finalist showed us, I think really the sky's the limit when it comes to property investment and all things property uh, in South Africa. Going to more of your questions and comments this evening, of course, asked to you, you know, which was the first episode that you watched uh, of the episode of the podcast, rather, as we celebrate 400 episodes in the highest number of uh episodes for any property podcast in the country. So it's quite a huge feat that we are proud of. It's Sapo Mokobudi saying my first episode was the very first episode that Private Property broadcasted online. Uh, the one that stood out the most in those earlier episodes was the five mistakes that first-time home buyers should avoid. Very important episode as I am a first-time home buyer and needed guidelines on things to avoid when pursuing this journey. And all happiness Malule gets saying I started to watch Private Property in 2020 in November, uh, where there was uh, forms of groups playing against one another, and they were talking about how to uh, go about running different stock files and how to join it. And I've learned a lot uh, from uh, uh, from the show. Rather, I've joined the I've joined from Facebook to Instagram, Twitter, and I've joined TikTok this year. Love it, absolutely love that. Well, of course, across uh, different social media platforms, so do make sure that you follow us there. There's different kinds of content that you're able to get across the board now. Gentlemen, as we wrap up, any final tips for viewers at home who are looking to uh, firstly either go into property invest investment or secondly, those who are already property investors for 2022? Uh, Andrew, I'll start with you. So those who are looking to go in and those who are already there, any tips and insights for the new year? Yeah, sure. So I think if you're going to be getting um, into the property market in 2022, it's very important that you understand what you're trying to achieve in property and where you want to start. Um, so for and regardless if you want to get into the buy to let market or the student accommodation, um, interest rates, there's only one way interest rates are going, and that's up. So when you run your numbers, don't go run your numbers on prime. You know, interest rates make it back to nine, ten percent. Yes, and it'll take a few years to get there. And I haven't got a mirror ball, but my view is over the next few years, interest rates are, will be going up. So don't run your numbers based on prime. Prime plus three, prime plus four, rather be safe than sorry. And just make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into. What are the risks? Um, and that is what the SA Property Investors Network is all about, by giving you that education to show you what the journey looks like. And should you get into flipping, buy to let Airbnb, um, there's a lot of different options out there for you. So start with investing in yourself making sure you understand what you're getting into, knowing interest rates will be going up, and be patient. Don't rush it. Don't try to go buy 10 properties in one month. Spend more time on yourself, planning yourself, understanding. One of the investors that won the most growth, I'm going to share this with you, Teren. Teren took ages to get going. Teren took, he had like 25 coaching sessions, attended events for I don't know how long, but once he got it, he bought a property every few months, and that just showed me you've got to be patient. So that's my last remark. <laughs> and thank you, Zama. 
Thank you very much there, Andrew. And Miguel, on your end, any tips, insights for viewers at home who are either A, you're looking to start their property investment journey or, and rather not even, or, and of course, secondly, those who are really property investors uh, for the new year. Uh, great, Simon. So uh, for, for aspiring investors, is not, invest in yourself. Get your skills up, get your, get your knowledge up. Uh, look, 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 look up South African Property Investors Network with Andrew. Get onto their webinars and, 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 and onto their events. There's plenty of resources on YouTube, plenty of great books to read. Uh, get to know other investors. So just really invest in yourself first before you go and spend one rand on a property deal. But then when you do, take action. Because very, very often we, we, we circle and circle and do analysis and, 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 and like a Terran's uh, story that uh, Andrew shared, you know, that's great. But at some point, you've got to take action at the right time. And then for existing, for existing property investors, I think uh, if, if you're a new property investor, having started in the last uh, 12 to 18 months, you came into a market that was low interest rates. So keep an eye on where those interest rates could go. Um, keep, keep a level head, build, build, build a bit of a, a stockpile in terms of savings, uh, just in case we do, we do hit any uh, curveballs ahead. Uh, but, but look forward and keep taking action. Keep, keep on growing. Keep, keep on building it for portfolio. Focus on your why and focus on what inspires you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such a great note to, to leave on, you know, focusing on the why is very important uh, because property is, has a lot of ups, uh, but it also certainly does have a lot of downs. I think when you're even dealing with tenants, dealing with admin, having to deal with, uh, uh, you know, renovations, there are a lot of things that can go wrong and understanding why you want to get started is always so crucial. Uh, final comment here coming through from Sarifu William Washain saying we can start drinking every day. Uh, cheers to 200 episodes and beyond thank you very much there sirifi uh andrew miguel it's been such a pleasure to have you with us and thank you very much for joining us this evening it's always so great to have you both on the show thank you Zama, very much. thank you so much for having us i think having been on a couple of these shows this year it's been an absolute pleasure uh talking property with you and andrew to your team at, 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 at the south african property investors network thanks for being great partners and doing what you do for property investors in south africa thank you guys Likewise, and thank you very much. And it's such a pleasure there, Miguel. I think we, we already know we're going to be having you back on the show in the new year, and we're looking excited uh, for that. And that's how we're going to wrap up the Wednesday edition of the Private Property Podcast with myself as I'm doing a Malo episode 400 done and dusted. And now, of course, we set our sights for episode 500 and beyond. Unfortunately, Spami was not watching us and did not claim that prize live. And so we've got another roll over tomorrow evening. 1,500 rands is going to be up for grabs well and i did say that i'm going to give away a spot prize that is the copy of the uh, property guide that is published by private property uh, to celebrate and certainly mark our 400th episode and uh, you know, the team has sent through some of the great comments that you have uh, sent through and the winner that I'm going to pick um, this evening is going to be um, Utepo Mkhubudi uh, who was watching from one of the earlier shows I read his comment earlier on this evening so congratulations to you Utepo you're going to walk away with a copy of the property guide uh, somebody in the team will certainly make sure that you get it do in the meantime slide into our dms um, on facebook so that we can get your details and make sure that you get that copy thank you very much at home for tuning in to episode 400 we're very very excited for the last couple of shows that we're going to be doing this year uh, and if especially there's one that we're planning um, and that we're really, really looking forward to pulling off later on in the month. And you're going to absolutely love it. So do stay tuned and certainly keep your eyes glued to our social media pages. From myself, Zamando Kumalo, and the rest of the Private Property Podcast team, that's it from us this evening. I'll be back on the screens tomorrow at 7 p.m. Of course, do stay tuned for SD Carson on the first time home bar show at 8 p.m. Until then, hope you're staying home and staying safe.